Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on adding in collision checks to our world scene, so then that way our player game object can actually move around our scene and collide with other game objects. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as a complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so now that we know how to work with our data from Tiled and how we can use our layer data to go ahead and create layers in our game and use that for checking for collisions, we can go ahead and move on to adding in our logic for checking for encounters in our game. So in our game, uh, since we're using Tiled for our level editor, we're going to create data in Tile to show where we want our player to be able to encounter wild monsters in our game. And so this is done by creating a layer in Tiled, similar to like what we did for our collisions, and it's just called Encounters. And when the player enters one of these areas for this layer, we want to add logic to check to see if they encounter a monster. And so this is just going to be random. And so there'll be a small chance that the player can encounter a monster. And if so, we want to switch to our battle scene. And so for us to go ahead and do this, uh, what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and load in a new asset. Uh, so if we can come to our preload scene, let's come to where we load in our world assets and let's jump over to our world asset keys and we're going to go ahead and add in a new asset for our encounter zones. So this is going to be similar to our collision image and it's just going to be an image for our encounter zone so that, that way we can easily see in our scene where the player will encounter monsters. And so for our asset, we're going to go ahead and call it world encounter zone and we'll go ahead and update our key to be the same as the value the back in our preload scene let's go ahead and copy our logic for one of our images it will go update our reference so we'll have our world encounter zone and then for our png uh, this is going to go ahead and be encounter png and now what we should be able to do is let's come back to our world scene and so for our encounters, uh, basically what we just need to do is create another tile map layer uh, that references the layer inside our level JSON file. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to copy uh, this block of code here where we create our collision layer. And so after we create our collision, uh, we'll go ahead and make a new variable. We're going to call this encounter layer. And for our layer, we need to reference the Prop, um, we need to go ahead and reference the layer with the name encounter. Uh, so if we jump over to our assets, our data, and our level JSON, we should see there is a tile layer with that name inside our level JSON file. And then what we need to do is we'll just leave collision tiles for the time being, and we'll keep position 0, 0. And then we'll go ahead and update our check, and we will update our error message. And so we'll say encounter layer using our data from tiled then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and update our alpha and we'll keep the same uh, configuration here for debugging and we'll also set our depth to two and so if we want our layer to be visible uh, what we need to do is go ahead and create our tile set similar to like what we did for our collision tiles before so let's go ahead and copy our logic here we're going to paste that above our encounter layer we'll update our variable and we'll do encounter tiles uh, for our reference, it's going to be encounter, and we need to update our asset. So this is going to be our encounter zone. We'll update our if statement. So we'll encounter error while creating encounter tiles from tiled. And then we'll go ahead and pass this in when we create our encounter layer. All right, so if we go ahead and save our changes, we should be able to go ahead and test our scene. And so we'll see right away at the top of our scene, our grass now has yellow over it. And this is our actual encounter layer uh, from our data and tiled. And if we go ahead and move up enough, we should see that our yellow is only over our grassy areas. All right, so now to actually add our logic for checking if there's an encounter, what we need to do is we need to know when the player finishes moving and when that happens, we want to go ahead and run some logic to check to see if our player actually encounters a monster in the new tile they've just entered. And so to do that, we're going to come down to our player instance, and we're going to go ahead and reference our sprite grid movement finish callback property. And we're going to add in a new callback. And so what this will do, this is the callback we added to our character class. And so this will be invoked once our character's movement is finished. And so when this happens, what we want to do is we're going to make a new method 
on our world scene class. We're going to call this handle player movement update. And what we'll do is we're going to come down to the bottom of our class and let's go ahead and add in that private method. All right, so what we're going to want to do in this method is we're going to need to check the position of our player against our encounter layer and see if a tile exists. So similar to what we did for our collision checks before we moved our player, now we're just going to do our check after the player moves and we'll use the player's current position. And so to do that, we actually need to go ahead and store a reference to our encounter layer on our class. So then that way we can use it down in our handle player movement update method. So what we'll do is we're going to change this to a property on our class. We'll do this and we'll have our private property. And then what we'll do is we'll come to the top of our class. Let's go ahead and add in that property. And we're just going to copy this type real quick. And this will be our phaser tile maps tile map layer. And then what we need to do is just update our references really quick. So let's copy this, paste it here, and we'll paste it here. And then so what we'll come we'll and then so what we'll do is we'll come back down to our method. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a safety check just to make sure our encounter layer actually exists. And if it doesn't, we will go ahead and return early. And if our encounter layer does exist, uh, what we're going to do is we want to check to see if this is an encounter zone. So we're going to make a new variable and we'll do is in encounter zone. So if our player is in the encounter zone, then what we need to do is we need to check our encounter layer and we want to do our get tile at world XY. And this will just ex expect our position. Uh, so this is going to be our player, our sprite game object and the x value and then this player sprite and then our y position and then we're going to go ahead and pass in true so then that way we get a tiled object back and we're going to check to see if our index does not equal negative one and if it is negative one uh, and so if our player is not in an encounter zone, we're just going to go ahead and return early. And so what this means is if our player is moving, if we enter an area that's not in the yellow, uh, this would be, we would be false for in the encounter zone. So we don't need to actually check to see if a monster gets encountered versus if our player moves into the yellow zone, we need to do this check. So after our if statement, what we're going to want to do is we're just going to add a console log statement. And then that way we just have some logging. So for testing our changes. So real quick, I'm going to come up to our create method. Let's copy one of our console logs and I'm going to paste that below our if statement. And what we'll do is grab our method name, replace create. And then for our message, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to change this to player is in an encounter zone. And then we need to go ahead and add in logic for checking if our player encounters a monster. And so to do that, we need to add a new property to our class. We're gonna do a private property and we'll do wild monster encountered. And this is going to be a Boolean. Um, so I'm just gonna set that equal to false real quick. We'll come to the top of our class. Let's add that in. And for our type, this will just be a Boolean. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the init method to our scene. And we'll go ahead and set that property in our init method. So we'll do our wild monster encountered. We're going to set it equal to false uh, when the init uh, method is invoked. So then what we'll do is we'll come back down to our handle player movement update method. And this is what we'll add in our logic. And so for our logic, basically what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use math.random uh, to go ahead and get a number between 0 and 1. And for our encounters, we just want to see if this value is less than a certain value. And we'll use that to randomly determine if we encounter a monster. And so just to make testing easy, we're going to do 0 0.9. And what we'll do is we're just going to add an if statement and if we encountered a wild monster. So if this evaluates to true, then we're going to go ahead and do a council log statement so we can test. And we'll say player encountered a wild monster. 
All right, so before we test, real quick, we're going to go ahead and make a minor change to our update method uh, in our class. Uh, so currently, our player input requires us to keep pressing our arrow keys to make the player move. Instead, we want to have it so if the player is holding a key, our player will keep moving. And so we're just going to change this to our get direction key press down method. And what that's going to do is now when we hold our right arrow key, our character's going to keep moving. Uh, so this will just make it easier for testing so the player's going to be holding the key and it should be a better player experience uh, for our game. So now what we should be able to do is in our scene, if we go into one of our yellow areas, we'll see right away that our player is in the encounter zone and we encountered a wild monster. And so we can see that our logic is firing very frequently. So if we bumped our number down to like 0 0.2, what we should be able to do now is move through our grass and hopefully get a few instances of where we don't have a monster. Uh, so now we're in the encounter zone, but we didn't encounter a monster. And if we keep moving around, eventually we should encounter a monster. There we go. All right, and then so if we want to just tweak that setting, we can increase the frequency of how frequently a monster will show up in this particular zone. All right, so now that we've tested, we just need to connect our scene to our battle scene once this happens. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we will go ahead and do our fade out effect on our main camera. And so we'll do fade out and we will go ahead and do two seconds. So 2000 milliseconds. And then once our fade out is complete, so we'll do our cameras, our main camera. And we're going to add an event listener uh, for our event for when that is done. So we'll do phaser, cameras, our scene 2D, our events, and we're going to do fade out complete. And so this event listener will go off once our fade out effect is completed. And so once this happens in our callback, we'll actually want to go ahead and start our battle scene. So we're going to do this scene and we'll do start. And we need to do our scene keys and we'll do battle scene. All right. And then so what we should be able to do is we come over to our scene. Let's go ahead and test. And so if we navigate over to one of our encounter areas. And there we go. Oh, and so one of the things we need to change is once we encounter a monster, our player should not be able to move anymore and our animation for walking should finish. And so we'll go ahead and fix that in a second. And so now when our monster appears, we're going to go ahead and let's just simulate our battle real quick. So we'll go ahead and attack our enemy monster. They should go ahead and attack us. And then what we'll do is let's attack them again. It should knock them out. And then ideally we should transition to our world scene. All right. So we knocked out the enemy monster. And oh, we restarted our battle scene. All right. So we have a few things to fix. So real quick, what we're going to do is let's jump into our battle scene. Let's come down to where we transition. And so what we'll do is we transition to our next scene. We'll go to that method. Yep. And so we'll go ahead and change this to world scene. So that'll fix one of our issues. For our other issue, uh, what we need to do is we need to come up to our update method. And we're just going to add a check that if our wild monster encounter is set to true, then all we're going to go ahead and do is we'll do return and we're going to call the update method on our player so then that way we can finish our animation so we'll do player update and we'll pass in time and then so this should return early so we should stop handling player input and that should fix that issue and then real quick let's go into our config just to make testing a little bit quicker we're going to go ahead and skip our battle animations and let's come to our world scene and we'll go ahead and test so now if our player moves to our encounter zone you should see as soon as we encounter a monster, we stop moving, our animation finishes, and then we fade out to our battle scene. And then real quick, if we test our battle scene, let's go ahead and fight. Our monster faints, and now we transition back to our world scene. All right, so now that we have the basic logic working for encountering wild monsters and transitioning to our battle scene, that brings an end to this video. In our next video, we're going to work on addressing the issue of once we transition to our battle scene and back to our world scene, our player's position is reset and we're back outside our house instead of in the position of where we were at in the grass when we encountered the monster. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. 
If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more Great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.